Hi Scorpio, welcome to your July 2021 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So as the month begins, the sun is in a fellow water sign. And that feels good because it forms a trine with your sun or your ascendant, depending on what you're listening for here. And um, it, it makes a friendly angle and it's coming from the... Uh, ninth house, which is a very positive place. The ninth house is the house of expansion. It can be mental expansion in the form of university, whether you're teaching or you're learning in one of those institutions. It can be, it, it's the higher mind, so it can uh, also be your philosophy, learning information that. Um, enhances your ability to navigate this life as a sage. Not surprisingly, it's Sagittarius's house. Sage, you see the connection there? And um, it's also the house of geographical expansion because it's the house of long distance travel. So needless to say, this area is emphasized because we do have cancer energy here and you may be traveling you may or you know if you're not currently uh, traveling you might be making preparations to do so and it's worth noting that um, this is uh, the type of travel that is more uh, distance wise than than something local the opposite house, the third house, would be more about local stuff that is happening, and that would be the Capricorn energy. And actually, um, with Pluto and Capricorn, you may feel oppressed by uh, your your neighbors, your local environment, uh, your, your siblings, your you know your extended family members like aunts and uncles and cousins, and you may wish to kind of it's almost like escaping from this provincial atmosphere and trying to um, really expand yourself. And for some Scorpios, this can be like quite um, a radical shift because you're a fixed sign and you tend to kind of um, gravitate uh, towards the tried and true. But now we are um, really getting to the end of the... Uh, transit of Pluto in Capricorn. We're already like, I think we're at like 27, 26 or 27 um, Capricorn. So in a couple of years, uh, Pluto will change signs and will go into Aquarius. But, you know, right now it's in this, this area that's your, that's your local area. And, um, you may just be feeling like you have to get out of Dodge and and uh, kind of like I was thinking of the Eight of Cups <laughs> uh, leaving behind what no longer serves and um, also the Three of Wands, you know, new new past wider pastures. So um, so Cancer is um, prominent and that Ninth House is is happening and you're going to have a new moon in this area on the 9th of July. And so again, there could be developments in this area uh, for you. If you are somebody who's been trying to get into college and you don't have to be 18 to be going to college, you might be 30 or 40. You, you might have um, finally gotten your, get your acceptance letter. You might be making plans. Um, Perhaps there's some kind of spiritual course that you've been wanting to take and you get the green light for that. There's actually going to be a green light period. This is the time when uh, Mar uh, Mercury has uh, left its shadow. And so we have like a two month window until approximately, um, I think it's about the 7th or 9th of September, somewhere around there. Um, maybe the 8th of September, where there's going to be um, personal planets that are free and clear. And so that tends to bode well for any new launches and things like that. 
So, um, you have a new moon in this area, and then on the 11th, Mercury joins um, the um, the sun in that uh, sector, and that can make you definitely have a connection with uh, some intellectual pursuits. And this can also involve language, whether you're learning or teaching um, a language to somebody else. Maybe you're traveling and teaching at the same time. Uh, you could be talking to people that are from another country. Why? Who knows? I mean, this could even be um, romantic, but it's at the more a formal stage or the beginning stages where you're talking some to somebody that you've met and maybe it will develop into something that's deeper. On the 21st, Venus goes into Virgo. And so for you, this is the third house of communication. Um, this could be some kind of, some kind of financial gain that has the internet to connect it because the internet can be associated with this area, but, but a writing, something to do with writing or teaching, there could be financial gain. If you're tutoring, um, this could be love. Um, maybe one of your brothers or sisters sets you up with one of their friends. Internet dating could be this, um, Harmony with neighbors, that could be what's going on. You could just be taking pleasure in some kind of literary pursuit of yours. On the 22nd, the sun goes into Leo. Okay, so Leo, um, again, when we, when we talk about um, Scorpio, we're talking about the 10th house of career. So Scorpio, this is really great because Venus is in this house as well. So here we have the sun and we have Venus in the 10th house. This could be a great uh, time for you with um, your career going into the month of August. So you may feel very um, ambitious right now really driven to succeed. And on top of that, because, well, let me, um, let me, uh, backtrack. Venus goes into Virgo, goes into that 11th house the day before the sun goes in. So Venus has been in this house for the first three weeks. Okay. Even though Venus is in the 11th house, it still can have a connection with your career because it could be financial gain from your career. But the sun in the 10th house gives you a commanding presence and um, it's like you're reaping the reward of whatever Venus in the 10th has provided because um, the 10th house can be authority figures and uh, Venus can be very charming and so you can really have your way with people that have uh, the power to, you know, advance you, to um, help you become even more successful. And this is, you know, happening for three weeks, for the first three weeks of the month, until Venus goes into the 11th house. But then the day after that, the sun goes into the 10th. So it's almost like you're, um, you know, kind of achieving that goal with the sun, you're embodying that success. On the 23rd, the next day after that, we have a full moon at one degree of Aquarius. This is another fixed sign, but it's in the opposite direction. So we're talking about the fourth house of home and family here, Scorpio. This is going to be the first of two full moons in Aquarius. So this can be a very emotional time for Scorpios. Scorpio, to me, even though you're a water sign, I... I really feel that a lot of Scorpios don't express their emotions um, quite readily. You know, uh, maybe you cry when you're alone, uh, but you tend to not want to 
uh, show that side of yourself, the more vulnerable side when you're in public because you see it as a sign of weakness. And that attitude uh, may come from times when you were younger, when you felt um, that things were out of your control. And this is, to me, ultimately what trauma is all about, is you know experiencing negative things and really feeling like there's nothing you can do about it, especially if you are young and you are powerless because of your age and because of your lack of understanding of what's happening. Um, Scorpio rules the eighth house and part of that can be trauma. And so um, the fourth house is another water house like the house that you rule. And all of the water houses, including the 12th, are all about uh, karma. And um, so they can keep people kind of um, trapped in the past. And, you know, the fourth house really is about the past because it is about childhood specifically. Full moons can bring these things uh, to the surface so that they can be released. And the thing about it is that it's almost like, you know, if you've ever had, I know this is kind of gross, we could say like a pimple or a boil or something like that, where it's, you know, I, I know if you're, I hope you're not eating. And I'm talking about pus and all that stuff. But, you know, the, the thing that, that we, we think of is so yucky, that pus. But when, or, you know, the blister breaks, the swelling goes down and it disappears. It has to come to a head. It has to have that stage. And yet, how many times have you had something where it just stays indefinitely in that pimple stage? And you're like, how am I ever going to get rid of this thing? Embracing the fact that um, there is still healing to do is a big part of this. But sometimes we've sublimated things so much that it's hard to even know that there's anything there. And so I feel like because there is going to be a blue moon in August and you're going to have two of these, you know, full moons back to back in the same house, it's going to give you ample opportunity to um, really release something from long ago that has been painful, um, that has felt like it has kept you uh, back held you back, kept you down. So being mindful of this, maybe you can um, see the signs when they arise, Scorpio. And instead of, you know, distracting yourself, really just uh, sitting still and, you know, embracing what comes up for you. And, you know, sometimes it can be letting go of some childhood, um, I, I don't want to say like a dream, but, it, you know, something that you thought that you wanted, that you realize is, was um, coming from a distorted place. And this is really uh, what finding ourselves is all about. I would say, you know, or even like... Um, having something that you do want come to fruition that's from childhood too. I mean, it could be something good that you want because I think a lot of times the things that we want in childhood are actually for us, but we get discouraged from following them from people that don't know who we really are. Okay. So on the 27th, Mercury goes into Leo and so now we have Mercury going into that 10th house and um, you could be, your words could be uh, heard by a lot of people for some reason. This can also be communicating with people um, in high positions, positions of authority. Maybe you're... Um, you know, starting a, a new job or something and you're um, having to negotiate or do something or maybe you're negotiating a raise 
with your superiors. Um, on the 28th, and, and plus you can be an authority yourself on something and speaking about it. On the 28th, Jupiter goes back into Aquarius, your opposite sign. So we're talking about the opposite house. And that is the seventh house of committed partnership. Jupiter in the seventh house, I mean, yes, it can be really uh, good for, for people who are coupled or who want to have a committed relationship. Yes, I mean, that's a given, but it can also be great for public relations. That's another facet of the seventh house, as well as legal matters. So all of these things um, will be themes until the end of this year with Jupiter coming back into this area. On the 29th, the next day, Mars goes into Virgo. So Virgo is um, your second house of earned income. I mean, what the, what the heck am I talking about? <laughs> Where I, was, I, I think I was looking at Leo and I was thinking that. Um, <laughs> Virgo is your 11th house of hopes and wishes. And Mars here is... Um, you know, I almost think of um, some Scorpios, and maybe this is because of that full moon in the fourth house, where some of you may be saying, you know what, I'm going to go for my dreams. I'm not going to allow anybody to talk me out of my dreams anymore. And you make that decision and you just, you know, grab the gusto, to quote an old beer commercial. Um, the 11th house is your social network, your, and whether it's your friendships, your group associations, you may be more active with them. However, you could be combative with them. Now, this can come about if you are clashing with people that you normally get along with. Um, you know, that seems to be a theme these days, unfortunately. And I think it's about the... Um, awakening that's occurring on a global universal scale and people are finding that whether it's family or friends uh, those that they have always um, had such an affinity for there's like they're splitting off and they and they're not agreeing on things and they feel very sad about this and um, it's very important to understand that um, this is a, a, a very um, widespread issue, and there's nothing wrong with um, what is happening, even though it may feel uncomfortable and it may feel sad, because it's um, how it has to be. Um, this, you know, this occurs on the micro um, level sometimes when you're married to someone, you know, or, you know, coupled with someone or you are, um, you know, even like, yeah, like this can happen with friendships too. And you just grow apart, you know, that happens, but this is like a more, um, widespread phenomenon right now. And the best thing you can do if you, if you are in a group where you, you know, thought that you had a uh, common goal and they are uh, going in a different direction is to let them go in love and not to, uh, you know, you can definitely um, state your truth and stand in your truth. But the problem that I see a lot of times today is that everybody wants to try to convince the other person. And that's kind of a trap. So, so being able to, um, you know, state your truth so that you expose them to a different way of thinking, but then having the detachment to let go of it is, is, um, a great thing. You don't have to, you know, get combative. Now, let's see. Okay. I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. Thank you for listening, Scorpio. I hope you have a great month. And if you would like a private reading with me, the link is below. Take care. Bye.